Hello and welcome to Advent of NeoVim. We're going to start off with a blank uninstalled NeoVim and move all the way up to having a fully configured NeoVim throughout this Advent. Full release 25, separate little videos explaining each little aspect along the way. We'll end up with something approximately around Kickstart if you're familiar with that, but it'll have its own sort of few ideas and things that are more personalized to the way I like it. I hope you like this series and we'll just go ahead and get started. So the first thing is, why why do I use NeoVim? I'm not going to try and convince you to use NeoVim. You already clicked on the video, so I'm assuming you have some interest in learning it. But in general, I don't think proselytizing technologies is a super productive use of my time. I'd rather write my own configs. You might think that that's a waste of time, but at least it makes me happy. Convincing you to use NeoVim does not. So instead, what we'll do is I'll just give you some of the reasons that I like using NeoVim, and maybe some of them will resonate with you. And if not, that's totally fine. You can go watch Prime Read instead of this. So I find it super satisfying to make things do exactly what I want them to do. We're going to show in this video that it's actually super easy to download, build, and install NeoVim in approximately a minute. And so you could even go so far as very easily changing and customizing NeoVim itself. Now, it might be annoying to keep the patches up and all this other stuff, but that's the level of flexibility that we have when we're exploring with NeoVim. I also find sort of the flip side of this, uh, there's the hacking side, which is in itself fun, but there's also the eliminating annoying things. And I don't know if you're like me, little annoying things have sort of an outsized impact on my day-to-day -day experiences, right? If I have to do something over and over that I really don't like doing, it bothers me. And you know, this is sort of a character flaw, but it bothers me more than it really should. So using NeoVim and allowing sort of this avenue for me to turn those annoyances into either things that I think are cool that I've sort of conquered or things that I no longer think about because we've completely automated them. That's a really valuable thing for the long-term health of my development. Now, yeah, <laughs> Mr. YouTuber talking about my development. I still write code, believe it or not, and I want to keep writing code for a long time. Uh, and the last little bit here is like the whole modal editing thing, which we'll cover uh, in one of the first few days here of Advent of NeoVim. It really clicks with my brain instead of having huge key sort of like chords or other things like this. We just can use a language to describe how we want to interact with the editor, which is what text objects and verbs and actions really are is sort of like a little mini language that you can learn to communicate with. It really clicks with my brain and works really well. So there's a few other reasons too. I like that it's properly open source. I like that there's no secret uh, incentives to try and get you to buy into cloud platforms or AI tooling, you know, stuff along these lines. But those are sort of secondary aspects and definitely not the primary motivators of how I got into and why I was using NeoVim. I do remember the very first time that I found out NeoVim existed. I was, uh, I think, college senior at the time. And I found out that you could write Python and it could change what was happening inside of your editor. And that blew my mind. At the time, all I had really experienced, <clears throat> Eclipse, that was it, that was it. I was pretty much used Eclipse and that was all. So I was really blown away by NeoVim uh, and that sort of stumbled me into a long path of now apparently, you know, making YouTube videos and streaming and doing other stuff. So, that's sort of why I use it. Maybe those make sense to you. Maybe they don't, but that's kind of the general idea. So how are we going to get started? Well, you have to get NeoVim. That's the first thing. Uh, pretty easy. You can go to the NeoVim website here, and it's got a bunch of different options uh, linked in the description for these slides as well. And you can click install. But personally, I really think building NeoVim from source is the way to go. And it's pretty easy. So you can just uh, make sure you install the build prerequisites. That's kind of a, an important bit. But if you've done that, you could go to something like here and just clone this in. I'm just going to do depth one just so that we can clone this quickly. We'll go back to here and says, hey, CD into NeoVim and make it. OK, cool. That's nice. So now we're making NeoVim. And keep in mind, this is downloading a bunch of external dependencies and pulling all of these in and all that good stuff. And it's still going to be very fast. We'll just we'll give it a second. Uh, but the reason that I'm showing this is because if you understand how this works, you can really easily, you know, check out different tags or different versions or get the latest version or roll back your version. All of those things are super easy if you start to understand 
how to build this for yourself. Uh, and of course, later, you know, then you could look at like, how does the Lua LSP work inside of here? Oh, okay, we can do this, blah, blah, right? So that's great. So now we've built it, uh, or and now we just need to download or uh, install it here. So we can install this, and now this would be installed. And I already have NeoVim obviously on my machine, but this would be building and installing again. And so this is a complete from scratch build. These are much faster if you do this later because you've already downloaded all the external dependencies. But there you go. Basically, within a minute, you can have the latest NeoVim, and it's even faster once you want to update that for yourself. So that's the very beginning part here. The next thing we want to note is, uh, hey, what are you going to do? How do you start doing anything inside of the editor? So if you're on Linux or Mac, this is uh, in config, NVim, init, Lua, and it's some similar thing in Windows. I don't know. I've never done that. And so here we go. We can do, we can open our NeoVim, and I'm actually going to do just a little bit of a, a little bit of a trick here. I would say, which is we can make an NVim app name and we'll just call this um, example. We'll call it NVim example and we'll open NeoVim. And now this is basically a fresh and clean NeoVim. Uh, this NVim app name is a trick for those of you who are a bit professionals or have some, uh, you know, maybe some other configs to completely separate your NeoVim configs if you're trying to uh, test out different ideas. So this has literally nothing inside of it. So for you, you would go to CD config NVim. I'm going to go to NVim example that doesn't exist yet. So we'll make it make dir NVim example CD into here. And this is what you would do if you had the same thing. And now we can do NVim app name here and we'll edit init Lua. You'll just run NVim init Lua if you're in the correct directory for you. Okay, sweet. Now we can do something like print hello world or maybe hello. We'll say advent of NeoVim. Now you might be saying, okay, I just opened NeoVim for the first time. I don't know how to do anything. Good point. You can press I to go to insert mode. Okay, you'll see how it says insert in the bottom left right now. Then you can start typing just like you would normally. Okay, we'll explain a little bit more of this in the next day. But you can start typing, just type the way you would of NeoVim here. Okay, and when you're done typing in insert mode, you can press escape or control C or we'll write remaps for that later for those of you who don't have, you know, sick dactyl maniform ortholinear keyboards. And then once you're back in that, you're no longer in insert mode, so now you're in normal mode. And interestingly, <clears throat> this is called normal mode because this is where you'll normally be spending your time. And that's maybe a little bit different from some of the ideas that maybe you're used to, but that's totally okay. And once you've done that, you'll see this little plus sign. This means, hey, you've got changes that aren't saved. This is where maybe you would be confused because you're saying, where's my save button or why isn't it auto saving? Oh, we'll get to those eventually. But... Uh, we need to send a command. The way that we tell NeoVim how to do commands is we type a colon. You'll see now we have this little colon and we're right down here. And we can just type write now or just W, but write at first will kind of give you what you're doing and see how that goes away. And it tells you that it was written. And now we can do this little quit. Great. If I open NeoVim up again, you'll see, hey, we printed that line twice because that's what we printed. If we want to delete this line, we can just tap D twice, DD. That deletes it. We'll write again, and then we will quit. Okay, and when we open NeoVim again like this, we'll see in messages, advent of NeoVim. Awesome. So that's basically everything we want. I wanted to cover in this first round, right? Which is just how do we do this? The last little tidbit is you're saying, okay, I want to start writing some of my own code. I don't really want to restart completely every single time. Well, that's pretty easy too. The way that we can do this is if we open this up, we can do source percent percent is sort of like a placeholder for this current file. And we can see that we wrote this. If we write something here again by saying hello, and we source percent, it's going to run this whole file top to bottom. One thing that's cool, though, is if we want to visually select something like once again, you just relax, don't worry, we'll cover visual selections later. But right now, just do something like shift V to visually select this line. We press colon again to send us into command mode and write Lua. This will actually just run what we've selected. So if we select these and we just do Lua, only the two lines that we're running will get executed. But this is pretty cool too, because you could do something like, and relax, we'll get here. Uh, my cool function is function, you know, print hello and like this. And if we select this, we could now call my cool function and it will print hello. 
So all of that is sort of the very basics of how we can start editing uh, text inside of NeoVim by going into insert mode, escaping back to normal mode, writing, and quitting. Tomorrow, we'll take our next step on our NeoVim journey. If you think this is a cool video, if you don't mind the random rants in the middle, let me know in the comments. I'm going to try out something different and hope you all enjoy it. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you later.